This unit is all about reactions of alkynes, which are organic compounds containing a carbon-carbon triple bond. Because the carbon-carbon triple bond is analogous to the carbon-carbon double bond, we'll see a lot of reactivity here that resembles reactions of alkenes we've already seen. For example, we're going to look at electrophilic addition reactions, radical reactions, oxidations, and reductions of alkynes. There are a few quirks that the carbon-carbon triple bond brings in, not the least of which is the fact that after addition happens once, it can happen again to the resulting alkene product. And there are a few other things that we're going to see throughout this unit as well that make alkenes somewhat unique. In this first lesson, our focus will be on the structure, acidity, and an introduction to addition reactions of alkynes. And in particular, in this lesson, we're going to see a lot of analogous reactivity to alkenes. Let's begin with the structures and unique acidity of alkynes. The alkyne is a functional group containing a carbon-carbon triple bond, and we make this important distinction between a terminal alkyne, in which the carbon-carbon triple bond is positioned at the end of a carbon chain, leaving us with a CH group on the end, and an internal alkyne, in which the triple bond is positioned between two R groups. The carbon-carbon triple bond itself is composed of one sigma bond and two pi bonds. And because each carbon is connected to only two other atoms, the carbons display sp hybridization and linear geometry. We'll see later that the fact that alkynes are linear actually simplifies stereochemical analysis to a degree, since we don't really need to think in three dimensions. In adding to an alkyne, we go from one dimension to two, rather than two dimensions to three, as in additions to an alkene. The simplest alkyne is C2H2, a compound known as acetylene or ethyne. If we examine the natural bond orbitals of this molecule, we can see the orbitals corresponding to the sigma bond and pi bonds in this structure. And the geometry is important, so we're going to take a look at those now. The sigma bond is just derived from the overlap of two sp hybrids, and looks like this. The little nubs of each sigma bond are invisible just due to where the cutoff of this orbital is placed. More important in terms of reactivity are the pi orbitals. One of the pi orbitals is positioned along the y-axis here so that the p orbitals that compose this pi orbital are py orbitals. The second pi orbital of the alkyne is perpendicular to the first, and we can see that here. The p orbitals that compose this pi orbital are aligned along the x-axis. If we overlay both orbitals on the structure, we can then see that approach of an electrophile can occur along either axis, the x or the y axis, due to the fact that the two pi orbitals in this molecule are perpendicular to each other. The pi star antibonding orbitals actually display a similar property. For example, here's the one along the x axis, and there is a complementary pi star orbital corresponding to the other pi bond that runs along the y axis. One very important aspect of the reactivity of terminal alkynes that contain this hanging sp carbon H group is that the terminal alkyne proton is relatively acidic, relative to, say, an alkenic or alkane proton. This means that a strong enough base can remove this proton, generating an intermediate with an anionic sp hybridized carbon called an acetylide. The pKa of a terminal alkyne is generally about 25, which is acidic enough to be deprotonated by many common strong nucleophiles or strong bases that we find in use. The reason for this harkens back to the effect of hybridization on the energy of an electron pair in a hybrid orbital. In the acetylide, this lone pair is located in an sp hybridized orbital, and it's a relatively stable pair of electrons because of the greater s character in the sp hybrid orbital relative to sp2 or sp3. This is what makes terminal alkynes so much more acidic than methyl groups and terminal alkenes, which contain a hanging CH2 group. Because the pKa of the terminal alkyne proton is about 25, any base whose conjugate acid has a pKa greater than 30 can completely deprotonate a terminal alkyne. And by completely deprotonate here, if you do the math on the Ka values, you'll see that with a pKa of the conjugate acid greater than 30, the overall equilibrium constant for this deprotonation is going to be greater than 10,000. That's essentially completely deprotonated in my book. These bases will universally be negatively charged and will come along often with an alkali metal cation and will commonly be things like NH2- and something like sodium NH2 or lithium NH2, H- or hydride and something like sodium or lithium hydride, and you might even see other carbanions used for this purpose, such as the methyl anion CH3-. This deprotonation is primarily used to turn that terminal alkyne carbon into a good nucleophile. 
we can combine an acetylide intermediate with an alkyl halide or pseudohalide, for example, to do substitution chemistry that establishes new carbon-carbon bonds.